and this is the effective inertial mass of the photon and it must also be equal to the effective gravitational mass of the photon now photon has mass even though it doesn't have a rest mass it has an effective inertial mass or an effective gravitational mass and so it must be affected by by gravity and let's see how it is affected by looking at an interesting example suppose you're on the surface of the earth ठीक है अर्थ की सरफेस पर हैं हम और एक लाइट सोर्स है विच इज एट अट एच अब द सर्फेस ऑफ दी अर्थ नाउ लाइट इज एमिटेड फ्रॉम दिस सोर्स सपोज द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द एमिटेड लाइट इज एफ Now what we expect is that the frequency of the light that reaches the earth has gone up f dash just because of gravity so there's a light above the surface of the earth it's emitting photons with the frequency f and when those photons reach the surface of the earth their frequency has gone up this is what we expect by saying that photons have mass now how do we prove this at this point the photon has a kinetic energy and a potential energy the total energy of the photon is hf at this point plus a, a potential energy term because now the photon has an effective mass and that potential energy is given by m g capital h where m is the effective mass that we define on the first blackboard so when the photon reaches here at the earth's level the energy has to be conserved here the photon does not have any potential energy but it will have an energy hf dash plus zero potential energy so what does this mean this means that f dash minus f is mg h over h now what is m is h f over c squared m is h f over c squared into g h over h so the frequency of the photon has gone up and this is a very small number if you take h to be 1 kilometers and c to be the speed of the light the change in frequency is of the order of parts per billion per billion is very small you can find out what this change in frequency is so when light reaches the earth its frequency changes this is a corollary of saying that the photon actually has mass and look at the other way look at the other way it's a it's a very nice example therefore i would like to finish this class with this example the converse of this process just bear with me for a couple of more minutes please suppose you're on the surface of a star a star emits photons because a star is luminous theek hai har star roshni deta hai hararat deta hai it's luminous now the mass of a star ms and suppose the radius of the star is rs now a photon a tiny photon on the surface of the star goes out into space theek hai अब ये फोटॉन है यहां इसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी है एफ नो वेन इट गोज आउट इन टू स्पेस इट्स फ्रीक्वेंसी चेंजेस बिकॉज इट्स मूविंग अवे फ्रॉम द स्टार द ग्रेविटेशनल पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द फोटॉन इज चेंजिंग हेयर द फ्रीक्वेंसी इज एच एफ डैश नाउ वी नो वेन एवर अ मास इज इन साइड ग्रेविटेशनल पोटेंशियल इट हैज पोटेंशियल एनर्जी गिवन बाई सो एट दिस पॉइंट द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज गिवन बाई माइनस जी 
mass of the photon mass of the sun divided by the radius and and the energy due to its the energy of the photon is hf at very far distances the gravitational potential energy of the photon goes to zero so its only energy is hf dash ठीक है अब अगर आप ये मास के ये वाला रिलेशनशिप यूज करें माइनस जी मास इज एच एफ सी स्क्वेर आर एस यू विल एक्चुअली गेट just done a rearrangement the h cancels out so this is my final expression the frequency now this number is smaller than can be smaller than one or greater than one if this number is in fact greater than one the left hand side becomes negative so you have a negative frequency here but how is that possible when will this number become greater than 1 when the numerator is much larger than the denominator and when is the numerator larger than the denominator when the mass of the star is very high as compared to the radius of the star and when you have a very large mass in a small radius when you have very large mass in a small radius you have a huge density and when this tips at a certain threshold when this becomes greater than 1 and that tipping point is when gms becomes greater than c square rs you will have a negative frequency which means that no photon will be emitted from this particular star and then this star is given a special name it's called a black hole so no light can escape from a black hole so this completes our discussion that a photon indeed has momentum it indeed has an inertial mass associated with it and you can explain a large variety of cosmological phenomena based on this fact so thank you very much